is because now Allah is giving us the opportunity to explain what jihad actually is. The same way when ISIS claimed a caliphate, it made the Muslims bring the word caliphate, i.e. khilafah, back into the discourse and give an Islamic understanding, right? To say that, you know, there, that, uh, that war is unholy and try to dance around with words. Look, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, there's so many verses in the Quran, there's so many ahadith. I was trying to pinpoint out of these 40 some verses that are very, very direct and the hundreds of hadith mm -hmm. that are about jihad. Imagine now it's like, how do you fit this in in less than three hours? That's how much information there is, right? So I'll look at this verse and just I'll just read the translation for you and I'll do a little bit of an explanation. In Surah the nisa look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right? So let those fight in the cause of Allah. Let those fight in the cause of Allah who sell the life of this world for the hereafter. Why is Allah saying selling this life? Is because this the our life is the most beloved thing to us. You can sacrifice a little bit of your money, but when it comes to your life, that's when the real test begins, right? And that's what is referred to as jihad. And who fights in the cause of Allah and is killed or achieves victory, which both are considered victories. We will bestow upon him a great reward. And what is the matter with you that you fight not, you do not fight, in the cause of Allah and for the oppressed among men and women and children who say, Our Lord, take us out of this city of oppressive people and appoint for us from Yusuf's protector and appoint for us from Yusuf's helper. Those who believe uh, fight in the cause of Allah. Allah equated it with your iman. Those who fight, those who believe. Right? Fight in the cause of Allah. And those who disbelieve, fight in the cause of Tawut, of falsehood. So fight against the allies of Satan. Indeed, the plot of Satan has ever been weak. Right? So when we talk and we've been busied as, you know, uh, in Islamic academics or as scholars, if you want to say, Fard al Ain and Fard al Kifaya, Fard. When Allah is commanding something, it means it's a Fard. And when something is Fard, it's holy. But here's what they say. This is what the, the, that crowd thinks. They say, holy war was invented as a term by Christians. That's fine. And that term in itself belongs to Christianity, and it's not a Muslim idea. Yeah, fine. Jihad is a Muslim idea. And that's where the problem is, is that just because there's an overlap in Christianity, there's overlaps in, in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Yeah. On various about that, right? How does it take away, just because... That religion used holy war as its term, and we use jihad. How does that that make anything different? Holy in itself is something that is attributed to your religion, right? Holy war, holy in itself is a word that is something that is assigned to a practice that is related to a an act of worship and ibadat, right? And when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, uh. Uh, um, you, you fight them. Um, you, uh, what, sorry, what was the I had said before the the show started? Fight those people who fight you. No, no, not, no, not them. Um, you, you, even though you detest it, right? Oh yes, yes, yes. You may love something, even yeah, yeah. You, even though it's bad for you, fighting is ordained for you. Yes, even fighting, yes. Yeah. fighting is ordained for you. Even, love, love, yeah. even though you detest love, love, love. it. So yeah. ordainment in itself is an act, an order of worship. Is ordained for you, even though you detest it. So, when when that when you look at that term in itself, it's a commandment, and it's also saying that it's an ibadah, meaning yeah. it's an act of worship. Yeah. So that in itself makes something holy. Yes, sir. So, so the way I look at it is that this is just a semantic thing, right? Oh, it doesn't say harb al muqaddas, right? Yeah, but you can argue that, right? Like for example, these are just terms of how we understand it, but we don't make a mistake about it. Fighting for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is a virtuous and noble thing and um, among the highest of honors that you can receive as a Muslim. Yeah. No, look, right? I, I think... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I was going to say that because the same thing applies, like, for example, let me just... Revert. Remember we were talking earlier about logic and applying the logic? Mm, okay. There we go. So let, let's do this here. What do you think about kafir? Well, we don't really have the word infidel in Islam. Infidel is a word invented by the, the Christian world. So we don't have any kafirs in the world. <laughs> yeah. That's right? a beautiful point. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Just apply the logic and it fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or going. No, but no, look. The, look, Ahmed Shaker, Shaker, Ahmed Shaker said something beautiful. And the same thing goes with Kafir. That there's a, there's a people, we've come to a time, he's talking about his time, that when you mention the word jihad, the Muslims who are with that Muslim, their faces turn red out of shame in front of the non-Muslims when you have to explain jihad to them. 
their, he said their faces turn red. Those are exact words, right? Wow. Yeah. But where did this idea come from? This idea of using the ver using a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu said to the believers, you know, you've come from the smaller jihad to the greater jihad. Let's give that hadith some context. Because a lot of people use that idea to disassociate themselves from jihad, which is originally qital. When Allah says qital in the Quran, He's referring to jihad. It's synonymous. They say it's jihad of the nafs is the greater jihad. Let's put the brakes on that. Who was Rasulullah Sallallahu referring to? Who was he talking to? He's talking to the Sahaba who actually just came from jihad in an expedition. To those people, it's very relevant for you to say to them, because they were actually involved in qital, jihad, to say to them, you just come from something really big, but now what you have to deal with is yourself, and the mu'amala, and the transactions, and yourself, and the revenge you may want to take, that is the greater jihad for you now. Why? Because they already did the original. You fulfilled the original. You fulfilled the original. It's like saying, look at the very, very it's simple It's contingent example. on fulfilling the original. Exactly. You know what it's like saying? We use words in hyperbole sometimes to drive a point, right? If I say to you, you know what? Let's say uh, there's an elderly gentleman who I respect a lot. I'm like, man, this guy's like my father. I love him. Am I going to take that man, kick my father out of my home, and say I have a new father now? Mm. You can't do that. You're using that feeling that you have for the original of your father because you love your father and applying it on this individual who you also have love for, but it doesn't remove the origin. That's really interesting because you can't respect that man as a father if you don't ha do it to your own father. Exactly. That is exactly, exactly the sense. point. That is exactly the point. Yeah. And the hadith are numerous. I mean, I have so many hadith. I don't even think it's necessary unless if you guys think so. But cool. look, I mean, if, yeah, I mean, I can mention some. Wait, so let me ask you something. Um, when you mentioned... Um, so... When we say, uh, when you say qital, right? The way I understand it, that qital is a branch of jihad. Generally, it's probably the most important, like, branch of it. Yeah. But it, it, jihad encompasses other, I mean, we it does. Say, well, Allah says qital in the Quran, he's referring to jihad. Yeah. The because it's jihad. the major, yes. the, the, like, it is, it is, it is the definition of the main usage of jihad, yes. right? The purpose. But I'm saying, I look at it like, okay, like, uh, <laughs> Like, if you have, like, a job description, right? You have a main thing that when you talk about your job, that's the main thing you're going to be doing. If you refer yeah. to the job or the task, that's your job. But what's, of course, what's, a, what's the literal meaning for uh, qital? To fight. Just for the... Listener. Yeah, to fight. Yeah. yeah. So to, why why is the Quran using two words interchangeably like that? Uh, it's a, to str One is the action. I think one would be, like, the the actual... Uh, because the ghaya, yeah. meaning the, the extent of what it comes from, qatala, to kill. The extent of that jihad is a killing which happens in warfare. Okay. Allah is giving the expectation by that word. You're going into this knowing that you're going to have to kill and you may be killed. That's why in the Quran Allah says, those who kill and be, be, or be killed. So no, would, you, would, you, would, you, why, would you say it's removing ambiguity yeah. by utilizing yes. two words? Thank you. I'm glad you said yeah. that. And to, and to be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and also the thing is, it's not only that, is that if you just, well, you mentioned, like, if you just use struggle, yeah. right? Well, what is, what kind of struggle? Well, struggle is about? actually not the most accurate definition either. I'm just saying if you yeah. want to use that, yeah. right? Because, Look how Allah destroyed the ambiguity. Yeah, exactly. Like jihad can be a struggle, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, fine. We struggle. I struggle against having to, you know, just forget about my wife. I yeah. struggle. I'm a mujahid, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Linguistically, you are <laughs> right, but Allah qualifies that. Yes. Says qital. There is no, like, I don't know. Do we know of any other translation of the word qital besides fight? No, no. It can either be fight, like fighting, meaning you get in a yeah, physical fight, fight or, or to, kill. to kill. That's yeah, it. Right, exactly. It's, but it, it does, always it, entails violence. It always entails violence. Right. Yes. And so what, what Allah is effectively saying is that there is a sometimes a necessary violence, which is a good violence. Yes. And this is something inherent. This is not something shameful. This is something uh, that, that is in harmony with human nature. Yeah. And I'll give you a small example. If Sim was home here today, and God forbid someone comes, breaks into his home and tries to harm Zeki, Sim applying violence to an, an intruder into his house to protect his son is a excellent display of violence. Yes. It is true. the most virtuous display of violence yeah. because you have the ability to protect those that are look up to you and are dependent on you and you exercise that violence in defense of people that need that, who yeah. cannot defend themselves. Yes. In that case, this is inherent to men. Yes. Without this, without men being violent, we wouldn't have justice. Yeah. No, I know. Look, I'll go, I'll go even a step farther. When the American troops went to Iraq and went to Afghanistan and went to all these different Muslim lands. For them, they went on a mission. They know they were going to be killed and they had to kill. For their ideology of capitalism is quote unquote spreading democracy because they hate our life. That is their jihad. It's That's, virtuous for them. It's virtuous. They're going to have a Veterans Day, bro. Yeah. Like you're celebrating these people. So look, the, 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 the other thing is that originally the word jihad is actually really it's kind of extensive. It means exerting your utmost effort. 
right? Struggle is cool. Struggle is a cool word. That's why we use it linguistically when a jurist comes up with a verdict. We refer to him as a mujtahid, or he did his ijtihad. He exerted all efforts possible, and he was the, he was the right person to do it because he's competent. And he was given stripes by his people, his 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 his, his fellow scholars of who taught him and those around him that this person is com competent enough to develop a verdict. But he's going to have to exert all, of it. and he's going to show us on paper and show us with his voice what he did to exert all of his efforts. Linguistically, that's cool. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about jihad in the Quran, he's not talking about linguistic. He's not, he's not referring to qital as linguistic. It's gone past that. There's a shari. And that's where we get this culture of yeah. commercial Muslim. I know I talked about this before. I was joking about this. It's like, you know, my uh, my American jihad, I think that's what that commercial was called. You know, like uh, me going to work, tying my shoes every day is my jihad. Me getting on the bus every day is my jihad. Me wearing my scarf is my jihad. Right? Yeah. Me waking up for fajr. So waking up for fajr, it is a type of ijtihad you're going to have to do, but you can't confuse it it's linguistic with somebody. Way. Two types of yeah. jihad, which are when somebody's attacking you and you have to fight back and you're ordering people to fight back. It's a fault of this commandment. Look at how strong this commandment is. The Rasulullah ﷺ ordered the people. If somebody infiltrates your 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 land and kills you and is fighting you, the, the, the wali, the husband, has no right to stop his wife from going out and protecting the Muslims. Mm. If she wants to fight, he can't stop her. Everyone is supposed to come out and protect, right? Yeah. So this is what it's. This is what I, I think is very, very important. The second thing is that you have to be very, very fair. The same way people go and spread their ideology by sending their armies and their battalions and all their technology, Muslims have a very similar, in, to a degree, a foreign policy where we send troops to people, to leaders who are oppressing their people, and give them options, right? We we're, when we're talking about jihad, we're not bloodthirsty people telling people because there's conditions. We're just go and fight and kill everybody. That's not what we're talking about. But if you're going to talk about jihad, you have to talk about it properly, especially if you're a scholar, right? You have to let people understand. Yes, this is a big part of our deen. Even when the Hadith of Rasulullah is mentioning that iman and the thing that protects iman, upholds the iman is jihad, right? Because you Allah's giving us an expectation. If you're not going to be able to defend this by your life, then you're not a true believer. This deen that you have. The expectation is there's going to come a time where you're going to have to defend it with your life if you're a true believer, mm -hmm. right? And there's some people that are exempt from that. But to s tell people that there's no such thing as holy war in Islam, and war is unholy actually, and then mentally using gymnastics to go around it and giving this false pretext of what Islam actually is and what Islam... That person and all the people that witnessed that interview... Now people who actually talk about jihad and like, yeah, these people understand it very incorrectly. And what, what happens to those people when they read the Quran now? Is Allah wrong now? No, what happens is this is what I'm trying to say. The problem with this kind of thinking and doing this mental gymnastics is A, Muslims who are familiar with you, you delegitimize yourself as a trustworthy scholar in front of them. Because this is something clear as day in the Quran, especially if you're an Arabic speaker, right? And I think it's very clear, especially if you read the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in English, and you hear the stories of the companion. What makes some of them virtuous is this very act exactly. they did. Look, right? and, and, you, and then you, well, I was going to say go the other problem is that to the non-Muslim, you end up appearing like a hypocrite. Yep. And they feel lied and deceived, right? So when someone comes into Islam and then they come across these verses and they're like, "Wait a minute, you know this Sheikh didn't tell me that it means that." You know, and then like, they, they, or if they were to apply his definition of the word, it makes it even more confusing. Yeah, yeah. and the prayer, we talk about prayer is important, right? The Hadith of the Prophet is he says, standing in an hour of the ranks of battle, right? In the ranks of battle, uh, for one hour, in the path of Allah, meaning in jihad, uh, to Allah is better than standing in prayer 60 years. Allahu Akbar. Right? What, what is he? What is he talking about? He's saying standing in battle, like jihad he's is holding enough? a flag at the rally for an hour. No, but dude, that's my jihad. No, but dude, you look, hold the flag for an hour. You're you're joking about that, but that that's what people can take it if you don't explain it properly. Like we have to be real about this. Like, and we have to understand. Yes, there's going to be ramifications of talking about this. There are, because that word jihad was taken away from the ummah, the Muslims of India. Think about it. Every the idea of jihad when the colonization happened was so stripped from them and from the Muslim world, where it became this weird boogeyman that no one could dare mention. And the, the look at the explanation of Abu Bakr, the Hadith of Rasulullah, the Ummah that's going to leave jihad is going to be humiliated and humiliated and humiliated, right? Because there's no if you're just not talking about jihad, which is a very important part of our deen, you're just talking about rituals that's just for you and me, and that's it. But why but, why would they be humiliated? That's the question you ask. Because you know why? Because when it's a, it's a, it's a, what is that famous English quote, right? Uh, in in the face of evil, uh, e evil prevails when good men do nothing. Yeah. Mm. Right. And that is essentially when you because jihad only takes place when there's oppression. 
They're synonymous with it, right? Yeah. Jihad has to exist when there's oppression. And there's always going to be oppression. So therefore, jihad exists, right? So if you do not do the jihad, oppression will get greater and greater. That's, that, that's where we come from. We th when they're saying the statement, it means that there's going to be no one there to stand up for the rights of people, to enjoy the good and forbid the evil, right? And this is the problem that we have. Because, like I said, without oppression, there's no jihad. This is what we're speaking about. And we know forever that there will be oppression always. Why? Yes. Because the malaika responded to Allah when he was created, creating Adam. That there, there would be bloodshed yeah. on the earth. What is bloodshed? It's just another way of oppression. Yeah. Another type of fitan. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah, all it is. Fundamentally, when, when you look at statements like this, the onus of an explanation, if you make something controversial, if you say something that doesn't really make sense or requires further explanation, you can't shame everyone else for for asking for an explanation or, or saying, hey, this, this is wrong. If you if you said something that has uh, is so wrapped up in nuance and you know further explanations and uh, f footnotes etc that's your responsibility to explain to everyone that hey I said something controversial but here's why here's yes my explanation on why I said what I said it's not for us for interpreting wrong right. on its face it's wrong because you donned the mantle of taking the responsibility of, of, of speaking about this yeah. so the onus is on you to clarify and make sure your positions are clear especially in the position of leadership when you are a person that is propagating the religion and ideas and you've donned this mantle yourself to do that, you've taken it upon yourself to give interviews and to give speeches and to bring people to Islam and to spread the message, you have to be absolutely clear and direct in what you're saying. The message that you're communicating to the people, both Muslims and non-Muslims. We don't have a hidden message. We don't tell Muslims one thing and non-Muslims the other thing. The message of Islam applies to everybody yep. equally. Yep. And we we got to stop promoting this pacifist Muslim, like pacifist Islam, Harmless. Allah is pacifist, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is pacifist, you know, it's all about your akhlaq, yeah, you know why akhlaq are really important? Because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was with people, he was the nicest and the most gentlest of people, but when he had to become dangerous, he could become dangerous, that's why he was a threat, but he was so beautiful and graceful at the same time, look, I'll, I'll, I'll mention a few more things here, look, which is very, very important, you know, when we talk about the concept of a tariqa, right, when people used to join tariqas, tariqas, historically were originally formed for mujahideen who were always on the battlefield when i say mujahideen i'm talking about the khalifa has the army which are known as mujahideen whether we like it or not that's what mujahideen are and they would be so involved in battle like how did umar the allah conquer all this land right was he a pacifist no but when we conquered all of these lands we had a huge responsibility and that responsibility was to remove oppression by way of men ruling other men with their own flawed ways of conducting themselves with their citizens, right? When Allah, when, when these tariqas, when they were, when the birth of them was that these people, the mujahideen, they're always on the battlefield. They need a way, a system of purification of the heart, of softening their hearts, right? Mm. So Sayyid Hawa, he, he has a great book about Tazkiyat al-Nafs and about jihad and tariqas. And he says, the person who's in a tariqa and is not involved in jihad, al-qital fi sabilillah, is fooling himself. You know, like we watch like those hadras, like the Shechen. So, you know, so, you know, so this is supposed to be a counterbalance. It's counterbalance like when you because, because they don't, they're because not the harshness of war and, and, and having like you have to be a certain mindset to be a soldier. Yes, and then you have to be able to shift away from that. But what are you, you gonna do when you're not with everybody else? They're attending durus. They're with the imam. They're with the khutbah. These guys are missing out on Jumaz. These guys are missing out on all the tarbiyah. They're all, they're just seeing oh, fighting. In that sense. Okay. Yeah, because I'm looking at a way to also soften. The realities, right? Because uh, that too—that's one of the benefits. If you are engaged in this pathway away from your family, you your heart can become hardened, less yeah. empathetic, yeah. less less sympathetic for people, yeah. right? Because if you like, a so, m many soldiers, even in like non-Muslim militaries, even today, right? One thing they complain about is that it's hard for me to adjust to civilian life. Yeah. It's hard for me to exactly. come back to life. Yeah. And to me, it seems what you're describing, or maybe what one of the intentions here was that no you have to keep your heart pure of course and, know, Allah and you have to know why you're doing it yeah. you have to be put things in perspective you have to understand that there is, you have to the only reason why you're engaging this is for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes, you hate what allah hates and you love what allah yeah. loves but those kinds of things look we all saw hadras like you remember the chechen hadras yeah. do, do, you, do you guys know historically why those were born mm. those were before jihad to you know how you like war cries and like that's what that was that was before jihad. To remind them. To that, remind them. Uh -huh. Do thicker before you start and do it together because you're united. Right? Yeah. So if you're not doing jihad and you're just doing it, that's why it's foolish. It looks funny. But it changes it now. These people are going to die in fighting 
of whether it's through oppression or protecting other people or spreading Islam, da'wah, whatever the case is, because one of the ways of da'wah is through jihad, right? And we can get into that later. But that's them getting together. Who, what, what, is, what do football teams do before they get riled up? Who, 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 they do all that yeah. stuff, right? So the, these people who are in tariqahs, who are mujahideen also, like, we got to do dhikr together because we're brothers. We're going to do this together. Let's all do dhikr as loud as we can together, and we're going to go fight. Wow, so, I mean, and I'm saying this in a camp of people who are saying that only focus on yourself, jihad is nafs, jihad is nafs, and you're a part of a tariqah, but, and you're doing hadras, ask yourself, why do these hadras begin in the first place? And why are you doing hadras if you're a part of a, a certain Sufi order or whatever the case is? Like, what are you doing it for? Yeah, of course, it's, you feel it's helping you and all that kind of stuff. Wow. Dhikr should help so you. So this was like an extra boost because they Before were you start, the harsh of reality. When Braveheart, when he was giving them a speech, what they thought is, what's the best thing to do before we meet Allah? Let's do dhikr. And let's do it together. Let's hold our hands and do it together and let's get crazy while we do dhikr. I also look at it in a way where it's like, they're reminding each other that, hey, battle is fierce. Crimes, I mean, it's not a pretty sight. There's gore, there's of blood, there there's killing, there's, there's shit, there's, there's ferocity in this, right? And you want to make sure you balance yourself that you don't go, you don't become a transgressor. Yeah. And in order to do that, the only thing that can prevent you from just, because war brings out a different kind of animal. People lose all humanity in war at times. The only way to center that and balance that is through the, the tranquility you have in your heart by the mentioning Allah's Allah. name. The remembrance of Allah, that's it. Right? And to remind you of who you're doing it for and the example that you have. Yeah. Like, and for example, when the Prophet would go into after Fath al-Mecca, he could have taken revenge on every single one of them with impunity. And we would have been okay with it. Yeah. But he didn't. No, no, that's, that's what I mean, with impunity. Yeah. Nobody would have questioned him. Yeah. Not one person would have questioned it even today. We would have defended that action. Yeah. Because he's the Rasul, right? But he chose to forgive all of them, with the exception of a few who were specifically named for yeah. their aggressions. But majority of them were not only forgiven, but also given shelter. Yeah. And accommodated for. Yes, sir. So in the fierceness of that, in, in, in the. Uh, the fire of battle, they were violent and forceful and, and had the goal of, of inflicting the most damage. But then they were able to shift from that to becoming people who were empathetic to people who were living in the area, had to provide for their families, yeah, needed a place to stay. Yes, and this is almost essentially what we would say in English, the warrior monk. Yeah, yeah. And look, check this out. Um, we gotta wrap this up. So. Okay, yeah. Let's, let's wrap up. Time, Sheikh. No, 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 yeah. Let's wrap up. No, 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 we have to make a jihad and play Maghrib. <laughs> but go ahead. Finish out. Your when, when two weeks ago, when we mentioned that the word jihad is resurfacing now, and we have to do our best to captivate, seize this moment, and teach it the way it's about. Gaza is one of the best. Is probably the best teacher we had in our lifetime. It brought back so many things. It united the ummah. People are feeling ghira for the ummah. People are talking about. Jihad now, where it was taken away from us from nine, after 9-11, right? And giving it a good, proper understanding with mercy and love, but also that it requires much difficulty and struggle, right? The same way you had mentioned that we've overcomplicated and the Zionist entity wants to complicate the issue of Gaza, just say it's complicated. You see that same formula within people now talking about Jihad, they're trying to overcomplicate it. But something that's so simple, it's as simple as what the Palestinians are going through. When the Palestinians are fighting for their lives, they are the forefront of jihad. It's the hadith of Rasulullah right? Yeah. The best of jihad, the vanguards are the frontier of those people who are in jihad. And the best frontier, the best vanguards are the ones from Asqalan, right? From, uh, from generally, which was known as Gaza to Asqalan, which is Gaza. Uh, so now we have to be very, very clear and concise. And I know I, a lot of the people are going to listen to this are mature, they understand. But if it gets into the uh, 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 miscommunication or mixed message, be very, very clear that jihad is not just to go and find anybody and kill them, especially if you have a treaty with them. Jihad, number one, there's many multiple types of jihad. Let's go through two of them. One is when somebody attacks you, even if somebody attacks you inside your home, and you are a Muslim because you believe in Allah from Rasulullah, you protecting your family and your little land, which is your house, is an act of jihad. If you die, you die as a shaheed, right? Because the hadith of Rasulullah, right? And also, jihad is by a sovereign Islamic entity. Call it whatever you want. Call it a khilafah, call it an Islamic government, whatever you want. When the khalifa sends an army to another land, like Muhammad did, like Umar did, like the khulafa did, and when they send them to the land, you know, like recently my wife, she was watching Fatih, and all this, she, she wants to rewatch Fatih, and everything is so beautiful. The, 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 the animation, the, the cartoon, yeah. the animation was, but it, dude, it almost brings tears to your eyes when he's going and talking to the ruler with the Izza, yeah. right? And he's saying, you're going to be, you have to, you're oppressing your people, we're going to take over this land, and we're going to rule by what Allah has revealed, 
and we're not going to do anything with you. We'll give you life. We'll give you this. We'll give you comfort. You just pay us taxes. They're laughing at him, right? That is uh, Islam, where you have somebody who represents you and sees oppression as an ummah and goes to that land, takes people away from oppression, and sends a battalion, sends an army. Like, we could talk about all the other stories and yeah. of even defensive jihad, but this is the vision that Allah and His Rasul gave us. This is the wasiyah of Rasulullah This is the inheritance of Rasulullah It's nothing to be ashamed of. There's going to be people who are going to be, they're going to turn red in their face when you mention the word jihad. Study it properly. Study it properly and be ready to talk about it because this word is not going away. It came back now. It's your responsibility. You can chicken-ish away from it and say that it's not a part of Islam. It's just struggling and putting your hijab in the morning and not shaving your beard as jihad, right? The second part of that clip, the audacity of this individual had to humanize that, uh, that net and Satan Yahoo, right? Yeah. Humanize him, saying, look at the one of the reasons why he may be doing this is because his father was killed by a Palestinian. How dare you, bro? How dare you humanize Netanyahu? Like, who the frick are you with, bro? Who are you with? Whose side are you on? So the, my problem is that if that was reversed, if a Muslim's father was killed by Netanyahu, would Hamza, uh, I mean, or the people would probably say, you know what? Uh, forgive him. Forgive them. It's okay. But for the other side, like, <laughs> understand them. Don't understand when it comes to the Muslim, take it. It's a as if we have to adopt a Christian worldview. You know, you yeah, slap this cheek, give offer, me that cheek. Offer you, you, that information was inaccurate. You grab that daughter, here's my other daughter. No, but the information was inaccurate too. I don't think it was a Palestinian who actually killed his brother. I don't even care if I that. But I'm saying, though, but I'm look, saying on many levels, it's wrong. It doesn't, it Why does it have to mention it that? It doesn't justify anything. It do dude, it's an atrocious crime to humanize this dude, bro. Why are you trying to hurt people, hurt people? Are you going to use that for freaking Netanyahu, bro? So, so what if what if we were to argue the same thing, right? To the person who made the argument, right? What if those poor um, lost souls that joined the Daesh, they only joined because Americans <laughs> bombed their father? Yeah. yeah. You're right. Like, what if, I mean, this is what I say when I say, when, when, when you guys are listening, one thing that differentiated the Muslims during the golden era is our ability to use logic. All of our scholars, with that logic, that mantiq within Islam, apply that here. I'm telling you, a lot of these statements that you hear, just apply that logic to a different scenario within Islam and see if, that, if it sticks. Yeah. And... Nine times out of ten, almost ten out of ten, you're gonna find that it doesn't. It's completely yeah. irrational. Yeah. No. And when I saw that, I thought that hey, you know what? Maybe it's a chopped up thing. And dude, and you know what? I am willing to. I'm hoping that we're wrong about all this about this clip that came out. And if it ends up being that there's actually an extended version that was cut out and it was misconstrued, wallahi, I'm going to be the first one to apologize and say I'm completely wrong. Same. Yeah. I swear but, to God. But but to be fair though, we didn't mention anyone for for that reason. Yes. However, that ideology still exists. Oh, it exists. Whether it's him or somebody else. And how right? dare you? Meaning that we're we're attacking the idea here. Yeah. Not the individual. How dare you try to water yeah. that down? I mean, the, the idea do because this idea is prevalent among some. Yeah. Right. And people who want to normalize and people who want to justify. Right. What they're doing is they're trying to make the other side, the injustice, more palatable. How dare you speak with so much confidence when you're completely wrong? Like, how do you do that? You're so wrong and you're so confident at the same like time. Like, the husband for the non-believer or the believer. Just say, it's not, yeah, we're humanizing. How's that, dude?